Hi, my name is George Garcia with Fusion 360. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the assets we made in the previous videos of the series in order to make a device, a finalized component that you can use. So as you can see, we've left off on the footprint that we made in the last video. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go and click on Create New Device. And as we've discussed previously, you can use the import option to bring in existing devices and modify them to your needs. But in this case, we're going to make a brand new one. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to type LM833. This is the part we wanted to make. It's a dual op amp. And what you're going to see is you're going to get this now multi-tiered window. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by adding in the symbols that we created to form gates, the gates of this device. And the term gate basically refers to a subsection within the footprint. So you imagine a dual op amp. That's a package that has two op amps in it. Each of those op amps is a separate gate. So we're going to click here on Add Part. And you, we're going to use the op amp symbol we created previously. Now you notice it's floating on my mouse cursor. And then over here, I have Add Level and Swap Level. Now, swap level in the device editor works exactly the same as in the symbol editor. You're determining what gates can be interchanged, which ones are equivalent. Add level, however, is new. Now, add level, you're going to be using more often than not the next add level and the request add level. The others have their uses too, and as a handy reference, you'll see a short description of each on screen in a moment. Now, next is like I said, the default, it's the most important one. Basically, it'll put in the gates in order. When you're in the schematic, you'll get gate 1, then gate 2, so on and so forth. Request is the other ad level we use frequently. Request hides a gate by default, so it won't come in when you're drawing your schematic by default, and that way you avoid cluttering up the signal flow. But you can bring in the gate later using the invoke command. So for now, we're going to leave these as is, and I'm just going to bring in two op amp gates. You don't have to be too critical where you place them. The device editor doesn't require centering around the origin like we recommend with the symbol and footprint editors. I'm going to hit escape so I can bring in this power pin symbol that I created, and I'm going to place it right here. Okay, so I'm going to hit cancel. Now, you can see they all have an add level of next and they have a swap level of zero, but this needs to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the change command, add level, and I'm going to set request for the power pins. So you'll notice add became request. When you add this part into a schematic, you're going to notice that it will add the first op amp, then the second op amp, but if you continue adding, it'll move on to another instance of the op amps. So it won't cycle into the power pins because they've been set as request. And the idea behind this is that you don't clutter up the main schematic and you can move the request gate onto a separate sheet and put the power connections there. And you keep the main sheet just focused on signal flow. This is entirely a stylistic preference. If you don't want to do that, you can just switch it back to next or one of the other options. Now the other thing we need to change is the swap level for these two op amps because right now they have a swap level of zero and they're set to be unique, which isn't the case. These are completely interchangeable. So again, we click on change, swap level. I'm going to set a value of one and now I'm going to click on both of them. Now the last thing we have to do here is you'll notice that by default, the gates have been given G$1, G$2, and G$3. So if I were to add this into a design right now, whatever prefix I chose for this part would then have the gate name appended to it. So it might be IC1, G$1, which is not very intuitive and not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a name command to change the names of these gates. So there are many conventions. I like personally the letters. So this will be gate A. This will be gate B. And then this will be gate P for power. 
Okay, some people like to put numerals, so they'll put like dash one, dash two, dash p, or whatever convention is convenient for you. So at this point, we've completed the symbol portion of the device, or us creating the gates. Now we need to bring in a footprint so we can map the pins to the pads. So I'm going to go over here to where it says new. Add local package. And you're going to see the two fit footprints that we've created. And I, obviously they're identical, so I could use either one. But let's say I want to use this one. I say OK. And you'll notice that I have a little yellow triangle here indicating that it's not yet mapped. You'll also notice in the viewfinders above it that you get the footprint preview and you also have the 3D model preview. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to define a prefix for this device. And the prefix is used in the reference designator when you bring the part into a design. So for something like an op amp, a good prefix is IC. So I'm going to click IC, OK. So now, whenever I bring this part into design, the name of the part is going to be IC1A, IC1B, then it'll go IC2A, IC2B, and so on and so forth for as many op amps as I bring into the design. And that's how prefix works. Now, value off and on warrant some explanation. Off, which is the default, is best used for integrated circuits or components that have a very specific part number. If you set value to off, then by default, the value of the component is going to be the same as its device name. So in this case, if I leave it set to off, the value is going to be LMA33. So this is desirable to me. So I'm going to leave it set to off. If we were working with something like a passive component, a resistor, and inductor capacitor, then you would want value set to on. When you set value to on, value by default is going to be empty. And it's going to be available for you to define whether the component is, you know, 330 ohms or 0.1 microfarad, whatever the value would be. So that's the difference between value off and value on. When in doubt, the safest thing is value on. But in this case, because I know I want the value to be LM833, I'll leave it set to off. Now, the last thing we need to do here is we click Connect. Now, you're going to see these two columns here, pin and pad. And the idea is that you map the pins in the first column to the pads in the second column. Now, it is OK to have more pads than pins. There are component packages that have several no connect pins or a large amount of ground pins. So it's OK to have an excess of pads. What is never allowed is to have more pins than pads. So the first column cannot be bigger than the second. In fact, you will not be allowed to associate to a footprint if it has fewer pads than there are pins in all of your gates summed together. So at this point, we have an equal amount. So I can go off the data sheet and just map the different values. One thing I do want to highlight is that you can assign multiple pads to a single pin. So just as an example, if I want to take these three pads and assign them to the first pin, I can say connect. And what you're going to see is that you see the different pads and there's a little icon here. So I'm going to go ahead and just make another connection so we can move selection and you can see that little icon more clearly. You'll notice it's set to all, but if I click it, it's going to change. So get a good look at it. I'm going to click it and now it's different. It's missing the little blue line in between and it's set to any. What does this mean? When you have multiple pads connected to a single pin, those pads can be connected internally within the chip or they can be connected externally. If a component has internal connections, then using the any option, which is what we have here, is preferred. What it means is as long as you connect to any of the three pads, then the netlist will be satisfied and the connection will be considered complete. On the other hand, if the component doesn't have those connections made internally and they need to be made externally, then you need the other version, which is the one with the little blue line in between and it's set to all. 
This means that in order for the connection to be considered complete on the board, all three pads have to be connected. When in doubt, the safest option is all, and that is the default. So it's just something to be aware of when you're making your own parts. Now this particular component doesn't require that. There's no multiple pads to a single pin scenario. So we don't have to worry about that. In this case, it's going to be one-to-one. -one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make those mappings now and not bore you with the details. So through the magic of editing, you'll be able to see a completed set. Now you can see that we've completed all of the connections. So once all of the connections have been made or the first column is empty, the pin column becomes empty, then the part is mapped. Remember how I said you can always have extra pads. That's okay. What you can't have is extra pins. So at this point, I'll say okay. And what you're going to notice is there's, there's now a check mark right here where it says mapped. And that lets you know everything is good, everything is ready to use. Now, one thing I want to highlight here is that you can have multiple footprints associated in a device. So many components have a surface mount version and a through-hole version. What we can do is we can map both of those within the same device. So just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and add the other footprint we had created. So I'm going to select it. Now, when you only have one package variant, you don't have to fill out variant name. But once you have another one, you're going to add another package variant, then there needs to be a variant name. Usually it's a single letter, because if you look on a data sheet, that's how they distinguish the different footprints. So I'm just going to give it just one letter. and I'm going to say OK. Now you're going to notice it's in, and it has the yellow triangle. Now, in our case, because this is exactly the same footprint, it'd be really nice if we can just reuse the pin mapping. So I'm going to say connect, and you're going to see that there's this option at the bottom that says copy from. If you click it, you'll find the other uh, package variant that we made. I select it, and now we have the mapping duplicated here. And you may think, well, that's kind of odd. Why would I want to be able to copy? if they're going to be different footprints. Well, what ends up happening is if you take a surface mount version, a surface mount footprint, and you compare it to its through hole counterpart, they're usually identical. So you can save time by just reusing the pin to pad mapping. So at this point, all we need to do is save the library, and we have a completed device ready to use in our own schematic designs. Now, one thing I didn't show you here is adding a spice model. Now, adding a spice model is not required to be able to use the parts. That's why we're not going into that detail here. But if you do intend to do spice simulation, then you're going to want to become familiar with this option. And the key here is being able to get a good model from the manufacturer. And that'll be the subject of a future video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.